Information Officer Anita Turmel and welcome to part one of this special GIS report. In commemoration of World Water Day on March 22nd, the Water and Sewers Department in collaboration with the Conservation and Fisheries Department are bringing you insight on the Virgin Islands view of wastewater and how it plays a role in our environment. This year's theme, Wastewater, focuses on improving water quality and reducing, treating and the reusing of wastewater. The handling of wastewater is important to all of us because the mistreatment of it can affect our ecosystem and our drinking water. Today we're here at the newly commissioned treatment plant at Bort Point, which treats raw sewage into clear odorless effluent. This effluent is what they call wastewater. Later on, we'll go up to Parakeeta Bay and see the treatment plant there and hear the department's plans on reusing wastewater. Ever wonder what happens to the waste that you flush down your toilet and goes through our collection system? Hi, my name is Bernard Grant, Deputy Director, Water and Sewage in charge of wastewater. And I'm about to take you on a tour to explain that to you. Come with me. This is the administration building. Come on inside. Good morning, Mr. Henry. How are you doing? Hi. Where are we at? Considered to be the control room. This is my friend, Mr. Henry, who take control. In, in other words, he's on duty today for this morning. What we have in front of us is the, the main program that controls this whole plant. As we know, the plant has a capacity of 900,000 imperial gallons per day. And with that sort of um, responsibility, we need the, the, the best uh, program of, uh, uh, in terms of automation in order for us to keep this plant producing what it should um, be producing clear and clean effluent. The control in front of us, to give you a, a basically a brief of it, it shows us the schematic of the plant. Each section of the plant could be viewed by the operator and what basically this tells the operator is the pumps that are working, the pumps that are not working in terms of function at the time of, of, of any particular um, instance in the day. The other advantage that the operator has in this room is what we call a physical view of the outside. In front of us, we have a camera set up outside so that when the operator is inside the room, he should be able to see physically what is going on on the outside. Because while the controller is giving us the function of the plant, they could have other mishaps that could be happening outside that the operator needs to be aware of. So he has the advantage of not just the physical view, but the operation of the plant. We are now outside um, the treatment plant and about to see you the, show you the sequence in which, uh, as, the, as the wastewater enter, what happens. To my far left is the main line that comes in. What it does, it bring, they bring in the, the wastewater that uh, you flush, as we explained at the beginning, that you flush down your toilet. As this wastewater leaves the pipe, it goes to a unit that we consider to be the preliminary treatment. What does the prelim preliminary treatment do? The basic um, idea is to remove all the trash and the, uh, um, the non-biodegradable um, products like um, your condom, your, your napkins, and uh, plastic, and anything that we might find in the, in the um, system that is not desirable for the plant. It goes through this unit and there is a, a, a mechanism that basically screen those trash out. When it leaves the screening process, it goes to an area that, uh, if you notice to the bottom of the unit, is a trash bin. What this unit does is a screw-like pump that operates and it basically takes the trash out and empties it in this unit, in the trash, in the trash bin. The men are in operation at the moment, um, going through their daily checks, including ensuring that the, the screens are kept clean, ensuring that all the units are, are functioning as, as um, should. 
However, we don't just focus on just the treatment of the sewage, we focus on the odor. On top of the ret retention tank, we have the fiberglass um, uh, sort of a tank looking. The purpose of that is to control the odor. They have um, in it uh, what we call odor eaters in, in terms of um, um, the, the wood chips and they control the odor in the plant so that while the sewage is awaiting and transferring, we must keep control of that odor. Come with me. Here we are. The processing tank or to describe this tank, the aeration chamber. This is the first section of the tank. What happens here? As the sewage is entered from the retention tank, it comes to this process where the, um, the, the bacteria is allowed to strive. And how is it allowed to strive? There is this particular device we have here on the right. It's, a, it's sort of a shape like an airplane um, propeller, which drives the switch to flow around. And in uh, addition, not only that it mixes the, um, the, the wastewater, but air is introduced at this point, continue to be introduced at this point in the aeration chamber. The purpose of this is to strive the bacteria, to basically provide an environment for the bacteria to grow, and it's the bacteria that actually breaks down the waste, waste and separates it into the, the actual liquid and solid. From here, this is where it goes. It comes to the secondary unit, call a clarifier. What does the clarifier does? It basically allows the, um, the, 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 the mix that comes from the aeration chamber to settle and to separate the solid from the liquid. As you can see, the, um, the, the, the solid settles to the, to, the, to the bottom where it is dislodged and goes into what we consider to be to our far left, the sludge holding tank. So the sludge settles in the clarifier and it is transferred to our sludge holding tank. From here, the operator, based on, based on certain levels that you will have in the control room, will tell them when they need to decant. What is decant basically? Is to um, allow the, 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 the scum to settle enough where they can take, get rid of the liquid on top, the floatable, which is considered to be the liquid, and the sludge is then pumped to our press room where we're gonna have to the back of you, where we're gonna describe. When the sludge leaves from the sludge holding tank, it comes to this building that houses uh, the, the, the sludge press. But before we can get the sludge completely solidified and separated, uh, behind of this sludge press is a unit that doses uh, what we consider, uh, we, we, we add a chemical to it in order to separate the, the sludge from, for the slip, separate the sludge from the water, we add a chemical to it that we um, call polymer. Polymer duty is basically to um, coagulate the solid so that the liquid will be separated. After the processing of the sludge, basically we have the, um, the solid, the, uh, the more solid part of the, the treatment, it goes to this bin. The sludge is goes, goes to this bin, which um, is taken away um, to our landfill, appropriate landfill as designated by government. Here we are at the the area where um, houses the effluent chambers, the effluent um, disc filters. Um, we have one to my left. It's not in operation now because the, the flow is not up to peak. That will allow it to operate. We also have one to our right. As I said earlier, this filter out any small particles that may have escaped into it and goes into our far holding chamber or the effluent holding chamber. From this point, um, we use the effluent water for two particular reasons. Uh, one, to pump out to sea because it's at the, uh, at, the, at the level which will be safe for the environment. 
two, we also reuse some of the effluent water. Now, I know we are a very um, environmentally conscious and therefore um, we, don't, don't, we do not pump all of the water. I'll just say we reuse some of the water for cleaning the facility and for, um, again, watering the, the, the plants if we do have plants. So they are used for effluent water instead of just um, pumping it out at sea. So I've just taken you on a tour of our facility at Board Point which I described to you, the uh, process in which uh, from we receive in the raw sewage to our final effluent, where we could environmentally discharge of it. And um, of course, um, being environmentally conscious, we, we have to make sure that, the, that the, um, we do not do any uh, further damage to our environment, okay? From here, we're gonna go to our facility in Parakita Bay. Just before we head to the Pyrokita Bay treatment plant, let me introduce to you the staff of the Board Point treatment plant, or some of the staff at the Board Point treatment plant. To my left, Mr. Von Alfonso, the plant manager. To his left is Mr. Leonard, the electrical technician. And to Mr. Leonard's left is Mr. Henry, the mechanical technician. And missing off camera, um, we have the lab technician and three additional plant operators. In our fire background, we have uh, the agriculture department. This is one of the youth government envision to reuse the effluent water to provide to our farmers so that they can um, have a much um, a cheaper supply of water and of course, um, grow the crop safely. We also envision that the, the pipe, the effluent pipe will be run somewhere towards the east and possibly all the way to Beef Island because for future development in Beef Island, government also envisioned to reuse that effluent water from the Paragrita Bay all the way to Beef Island. Of course, you know, we still have the, the outfall at Paragrita Bay in the event that all the effluent water cannot be reused, we have the old fall as a backup. Well, I hope you have a better understanding of how effluent, also known as treated wastewater, is handled here in the Territory. I'm Information Officer Nixa Turnbull reporting for the Ministry of Communications and Works. Stay tuned for part two with my colleague, Information Officer, Feliza Fenty at the Ministry of Natural Resources and Labor. Music